somewhere on a deserted planet there is a Necron tomb world desolate and isolated from all but there is a sentry which has come back to the tomb and is starting to awaken the Necrons there is an unknown force on its way to the planet which has to be dealt with, has to be destroyed and only the unwoken Necrons can do it. Nick speaking and welcome to this video right another special battle report for you I'm playing Ace Face once again uh, this is our fifth game and we are currently tied on two games each now I've just come off the back of winning the last two games so I know Ace Face is out for blood so this is going to be um, a very interesting and a very fun game so of course I am playing my Necrons here um, I'm going to run through my army I'm still waiting for Ace to arrive um, but uh, yeah it's going to be a fantastic day I can't wait to get started. So let's just run through the list. So we're playing 2,000 points. I'm playing my Flayed One Decorium, um, but I have made a few changes. So heading up the army here, we've got the Necron Overlord. He has a Phase Shifter and a Veil of Darkness. He is joined to five Immortals, all with Gores. And of course, behind there, the big bad boy, the Monolith, um, a new addition to this particular list. We we'll then run with two squads of ten warriors, they're just going to be on foot, and uh, three a tomb blades. Now these are the old Necron destroyer models, the metal models, which uses uh, tomb blades. Um, I've got looms on them tonight. We then have uh, two canaptic harvest formations at the back there, six wraiths in each, um, and they've all got whip coils. We then have the two Tomb Spiders, and both of those tonight have got the um, Fabricator Claw Array. Uh, hopefully to try and help the Monolith uh, stay alive a little bit longer. And uh, of course three obligatory um, Scarab Swarms. We then have eight uh, Auxiliary Formations, or Auxiliary Units, um, and we have eight squads of five Flayed Ones. So, as I said, I'm pretty much using my Flayed One army, but I have tweaked it a little bit. Um, playing Maelstrom missions, um, like I said, I'm waiting for Ace to arrive. Um, I have set the table up already. Um, of course, I'm going to give Ace the option to uh, change anything that he wants, um, maybe even you know, start the train again. So, you know, of course, that's, that's no problem. But what I've tried to do is set the train up in the most scenic fashion I can. So we've got the tomb at the back there, uh, just coming down here, uh, like a nice symmetrical formation. So I think it looks pretty cool. Hopefully Ace will like it. And um, we'll have a look at Ace's list next. Right, here we go. So Ace has arrived. Um, we've set up, done all the missions and everything. I'll run through that in a second. Uh, but first of all, just a hi to Ace. Hi Ace, thanks for coming down. Always a pleasure. Uh, right, so Ace has actually brought his Tau um, and a very nasty Tau army indeed. Um, all I'll do is I'm going to pass it over to Ace, let him run through the list so you can get an idea of what he's got. Right, first of all I will say, just as uh, I did give Nick the opportunity to have a milder list than this. You better zoom um, in I think for this, look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he did get the opportunity to take a slightly tamer list, but he's up for the challenge, so uh, bear that in mind, we'll see what happens. I still think I've got a battle on my uh, hands. Um, so basically this is my 2000 points, so we've got two units of crew as my troops choice. Um, I have, as my warlord still to come in, I have Shadow Sun. Um, and she has got her command drone with her. Um, I have the two fast attack uh, wide-tied riptides, both absolutely kitted out the same. So they have interceptor and they have feel no pain. Um, I have one standard ion riptide. He has interceptor, he has obviously the ion cannon and he has the twin linked fusion blaster. Um, I then have a unit of four Pathfinders, my new girls, um, so they're stand-ins for the Pathfinders, um, just again minimum squad there, um, and then I have the formation which is the uh, stealth um, formation which consists of the ghost kill, and the ghost kill is kitted out with his uh, fusion um, blaster as well as the fusion small blast gun as well and he has his 
uh, his two drones that come with him and then two units of stealth suits one is with shadow sun at the moment who are out flanking um, and then we have another unit they're both exactly the same so two burst cannons one fusion the fusion's your captain guy and he has got split fire we have two marker drones again on both units um, so that is them shadow sun's unit has the um, the command um, drone with them um, and then last but not least the big guy so only just sort of started painting him at the moment but it was too much of a good opportunity to bring him down and see what he did so that is the supremacy suit he has got his um, ion arms I uh, can't remember the exact name for him and um, so he's got them and then obviously his main big gun is just kit 600 points of total nastiness um, so yeah, my tail were unbeated, unbeaten when I uh, took them to, to Nick's last time so they definitely feel that there is a point to prove and this is the nastiest 2000 points I could put together so it will be interesting but with so many units it's going to be tough with those objectives so we'll see. Okay so there you go, um, so yeah we rolled off the mission, we're playing Tactical Escalation uh, we've got the objectives down effectively, we've got three on each side um, so there's one there just in the ruins, uh, there's one just in front of the monolith and one in the other ruins there and on the tower side we've got one in that piece of terrain, uh, one behind that uh, tomb and one just behind that tomb. Um, so I am currently going first, I've uh, obviously deployed, so we have the monolith there, the two tomb spiders behind, two uh, the Canaptic Harvest formations either side, we've got some warriors and the overlord with his immortals there, tomb blaze just hiding behind the building with some more warriors in that building, I've infiltrated six units of flayed ones in the end, I'm going to keep two aside for deep striking, so I've managed to get um, one unit here within 12 inches of that um, Tau units um, and then the other squad here just like a little backup and over this side I've got uh, three units around this building here with that objective and one just in that piece of terrain with the dead blood angel um, so yeah obviously um, Ace has deployed and um, I said I'm going first but I'm sure he's going to have a go at seizing the initiative so uh, here we go seize the initiative roll a six, initiative is stolen, that is not a good start for the Necrons. Okay, so here we go then, it's gonna be turn one for the Tau. Okay, so that was turn one there for the Tau. Now, I don't know if Ace has a name for his list or not, but um, I think he should name it Tau Terror. Um, it's a pretty nasty list. Okay, so what happened? Um, well actually we started off pretty well because Ace um, he wounded himself twice. Once on that one. guy there yeah. and then once on the guy right at the back. Not the big one, the small one at the back from his overcharges. So that was a good start. Um, but then he jumped those two um, white eyes up there into that building. Um, used the torrent flamers on my flayed ones. Uh, the first one only got one flamer through and I managed to, I think I only lost one, uh, but the second flamer did uh, no, then the guns came in um, and killed me out. So that was first blood. And the second one got both flamer templates in. I saved slightly better, only lost two of the flayed ones. And then the small guns couldn't shoot because I was behind the building. So not too bad, I'm still there. Um, over this side of the table, obviously the big monolith is gone. Um, that was destroyed by the big bad boy um, and his D weapons. He rolled a six um, on the D weapon. That massive blast template, that one right over there. Um, obviously it was uh, dead on and um, I did lose some other units as well. So I lost a couple of wraiths from here with no saves on the six. Uh, the two, Both team spiders are down to one wound now. Uh, lost another wound on that wraith as some scarabs have dwindled down so I've definitely dwindled in numbers and the other gun shot my flayed one here did quite slightly better I managed to uh, just only uh, lose one the others survived um, I think that was it for death um, as such now Ace drew his tactical objective card and uh, it was number five which is uh, that one just over there so he managed to kill get that point um, and of course he got first blood so I'm two points down um, stealing first turn was pretty useful I think but 
you know, this uh, game could could depend on the cards, I think, more than anything. So, although it's, um, I am depleted quite a lot, uh, you never know, the cards may be in my favour, we'll find out, as we move in to Necron, turn one. Okay, so that was my turn one. Um, I drew the card, I got um, a, the card that gives me a point for, for uh, killing his Warlord. Uh, the Warlord is not on the table because it's flanking. So um, on a bit of a back foot here, um, decided I had no choice but just uh, to be a bit aggressive and just go for it. So that's what I've done. So I started off giving RP to both um, formations, uh, sent the race out over there. Uh, the flayed ones there, um, obviously because I infiltrated I wasn't able to assault, so I just uh, hung around in that building there. Um, moved the flayed ones up into the um, dangerous terrain there, gives me a slightly better cover save in there. Uh, generated two scarabs on that unit that was uh, down to just two already. Um, and then just moved the whole blob forward really here, just moving and running forward. Uh, I moved the Tomb Blades there, I moved and ran the flayed ones up onto that piece of uh, terrain and the other flayed ones went up over there. Um, and then I tried to assault the flayed ones to that Riptide there. Um, I needed a 10 um, but I didn't get uh, in. However I did manage to uh, get in over here, I needed a 9. I uh, managed to get in on that unit of stealth suits um, and I managed to get uh, I think it was 6 rending attacks through. So. Uh, wiped those out with ease, just consolidated there, just hanging around that objective. So um, yeah, that was my turn one, uh, no points scored, but um, we push on as it uh, goes into turn two for the Tau. Okay, so that was uh, turn two there for the Tau. Uh, the reserves came on, so uh, the Warlord there just um, flanked and then uh, Shot the marker lights up over to my wraiths um, and then just uh, use the jump back pack move just behind that building there. Um, over this side of the table, the two riptides came up around this building area to use their torrent flamer things. Um, they managed to, well, one of them managed to take out the good chunk of the flayed ones. The two flayed ones that were left are running, um, and that riptide moved up in its jump move just uh, there. Uh, the other one targeted the uh, wraiths, um, killed one wraith from the, the flamer and guns, um, and then just jumped back there, as you can see, um, in the assault phase. The big guy there, um, he shot um, along with the crute and that guy at the back, whoever that is, um, at my wraiths. Um, and I, I rolled really solid there. Uh, I think I lost one wound on a wraith, that's pretty much it. Um, the big guy then shot the massive blast um, up over this area. Um, Got a little bit of a scatter, but um, I sort of basically I did pretty well there. I was pretty lucky because both of my tomb spiders on one wound each. Remember, uh, managed to survive. I did lose a couple of scarabs and uh, the two flayed ones that were just hanging around there. Um, but that wasn't too bad. I was quite happy with that, to be fair. Um, and then I got assaulted by a big guy there. Um, I did manage to do a wound, which is quite useful. Actually, this guy here also took a wound from the overcharge. Um, and then I lost a couple of wraiths uh, from his stomp attacks. Um, and that was pretty much it. Uh, the Tau objective cards um, he didn't actually manage to achieve. One was to uh, get the objective that I'm on, and the other one was to uh, clear me off an objective and take it. So he failed both of those. So I'm still two kill points or victory points to zero down. Um, but we've got turn two, and I've got my reserves to come in. So uh, turn two for the Necrons. Okay, so that was my turn two. Uh, both the flayed one units from reserve, they stayed in reserve. Um, so I decided to take the ball by the horns and uh, basically just have a bit of fun because I think I'm really going to struggle uh, to, to get anywhere in this game. So I decided just to have some fun. Uh, so my first move, um, after drawing another objective card, uh, that I had to get basically objective number five, which is that one right the way over there. Uh, so my first move was to use the Veil of Darkness with the Overlord and the Immortals. I went there, I scattered 12 inches, uh, landed on the Riptide and then uh, went into ongoing reserve. I gave a RP to both of the formations, the Wraiths of course were out of range. Um, I then generated two Scarab Swarms um, on the bigger units of uh, Scarabs, sent both Scarab Swarm units over towards that Riptide. The two flayed ones uh, did actually regroup. 
Uh, I then decided to see if I could get my only potential objective uh, card points, that was kill the Warlord uh, for D3 points. So I basically moved the Warriors up onto that building to get line of sight, moved the Tomb Blades back, moved those Warriors back there, rapid fired all those Warriors into it and the, t the uh, Tomb Blades. Did manage to get a couple of guys, but of course I had their 2 plus cover save for the uh, building there. Um, tried to use my relentless rule and assault with both units. I failed both assaults. I ended up assaulting with the tomb blades. Um, we did no wounds each, so we're just locked in combat. But um, of course, I do have that card for maybe later in the game. The tomb spider is just uh, hanging out there on objective two. Pretty sure he's going to be a bit dead next turn. To be fair. Uh, both of those flayed ones just moved up onto the building. The front unit, I tried to assault the big guy, um, but I was out of range. Um, and then the other wraiths there, I assaulted the Riptide, which was just hanging back there. I'll tell you the story of what happened there in a second. So over this side, we uh, went into the assault. Um, I did I did no wounds, did I? No, no I did no wounds. Um, I did wounds, but Ace saved them. Um, I lost uh, two Scarab bases and we just sort of locked in combat there. He tried to do hit and run and failed. Over this side of the table here, um, my race went in. I did manage to uh, get some wounds through, but again, he saved them all. And then he rolled a one for his hit and run, managed to do hit and run. I, of course, consolidated. I consolidated six inches. Over here, we went on to the uh, big guy assault. And um, as you can see, I still have both of my wraiths there. Um, I didn't cause any wounds. Um, I was just locked in combat. And that was pretty much it. Um, so as I said, I've still got the flayed ones in reserve. And um, no points to me. Um, Ace did actually manage to get another point because he had a card which, um, if I failed to kill a unit outright, he got a point. So he played that card, so he's on three points now to my zero as we move into Tau turn three. Yes. Okay, so turn three there for the Tau. Uh, so I pulled another couple of uh, cards out and um, had this objective here, which is a pretty easy one. Uh, just moved the Riptide up, um, took away his cover sober some marker lights from the girls up over there um, and shot him down quite easily. Um, and then of course got that points for that objective. Um, the rip, the massive guy, whatever his name is, uh, he continued the assault with my two wraiths, and as you can see, I've still got two wraiths. I did no wounds, so just locked in combat once again. It's pretty useful, stopping him from shooting at least. In the meantime, the crew moved up to objective one, as that was their uh, point. So that was another point. So that's uh, five point now. Point five points now for the tower. Uh, everything else here uh, shot my wraiths. Um, I did lose a one wraith, um, and then in the jump phase for the assault moves, they just basically got onto objective five because that's one of my cards, and um, just just basically holding out there. Um, that guy at the back there, he's just basically jumped up. He was in combat here, but uh, he uses special overcharge rule, and he's gone into ongoing reserve. So that is it, apart from the little assault here, uh, tin spoons, I did manage to kill one of the stealth suit things. Uh, I was saved really well there, um, so we're just locked in combat. Okay, so it's gonna be turn three for me, and I have three reserves, two units of flayed ones, and the overlord with his immortals. So uh, still, still more to play for, um, but I think it's ultimately gonna depend on what cards I pull out. Okay, so turn three for the Necrons. Okay, so that was my turn three. Um, all of my reserves came in, and um, I had some pretty good plans for them, to be fair. Um, but it all went wrong. So <laughs> let me uh, explain what happened. So um, I drew out a card which uh, gave me a point for killing a monstrous creature. Um, so I tr sort of decided to have a go at getting the reptile that was on the objective number two. Um, so I deep straight a a uh, group of flayed ones just there, the idea being to, to hold them out for one turn, survive here and then assault them the next turn to try and get my D3 Warlord um, result. Uh, moved up these guys and the warriors into rapid fire range and the two flayed ones that were there into assault range of the reptide that was there, Riptide. 
Um, the other units of flayed ones I deep striked here. Um, tried to go on the objective, scattered off, so I just ran back a few inches. And I took the scarabs that were there over here to assault the uh, Pathfinder girls that were there. Um, I then tried to deep strike the Overlord down. My idea, because he's got the Staff of Light, was to try and take out that guy there. Um, he's just got a 3 plus save. And then I was going to use the Wraiths to assault the guy at the back. Um, as it was, I came down, I scattered, uh, mishapped, and I rolled a 1. So I died, lost, I uh, slay the Warlord uh, there. So, um, alternatively to that, I took the race over and decided just to go for squishy units because um, there's no way I'm going to get through those, I thought. So I went over there with the wraiths, um, targeted the little crute unit, uh, took the flayed ones off of there, the, the back units there had to run to get closer. Uh, went into those crute with the flayed ones. Uh, I then shot, rapid fired all of those guns, uh, shot those, a few of them rapid firing at the riptide that was there. Um, I did no damage at all, so I proceeded to assault. Um, I did get a wound off from his overcharge, it's the only way I can get a, a wound off a riptide at the moment. Uh, so he overcharged in Overwatch and lost a wound. Saved you off, feel no pain. Did you? Oh, oh no. Oh. He actually saved that wound, yes, that's right. Feel no pain saved him. Uh, assaulted, no wounds done. I lost a couple of flayed ones. Um, basically, he did feel no pain. No, he did um, hit and run. Rolled another one, successfully. <laughs> Came down here, and obviously my flayed one plan to get Slay the Warlord has just gone disastrously wrong. Um, yeah, that's not good. Over here, I did, of course, manage to take out the Pathfinder girls, consolidated there, and the wraiths right up over there. I did manage to kill seven Crute, and uh, they rolled a double one for the leadership. Uh, so holding fast there with three Crute on my flayed ones. Um, and then over here, I lost one of the flayed ones, um, two from Overwatch, and then one in the assault. I killed... Uh, I think I said one, one crew, yeah. so it was a lot to combat, so we just tied there. Um, I did lose one wraith to the big guy, um, but yeah, still holding him in, in combat, which has been pretty useful because his firepower is absolutely atrocious. Um, okay, so I think that sums up turn three. Very eventful. I have zero points still. Um, I've dis disregarded a couple of cards and hope that I can draw some decent cards um, as we move into turn four for the Tau. Okay, so turn four there for the Tau. And the Riptide that was in ongoing reserve, he came down there. Um, targeted my warriors, as you can see, depleted the numbers. I've lost 50% of them. Um, I didn't run, um, but yeah, that's uh, happened there. This Reptide here did what uh, we thought he was going to do, came over, uh, shot, and then assaulted the flayed ones that were there, uh, wiped them out, and that was actually another victory point because he had a card um, to kill a unit in the assault. Uh, so that was a victory point. Here we did no wounds each. Um, I'll probably have to disregard my Warlord card because I don't think I'm going to get that one there, especially with that Riptide there. Um, coming over this side of the table, my Wraith did really well again, um, holding that big guy up in close combat. Um, he's down to eight wounds. Wow. Think I can kill him? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, the Crute um, and that single flayed one went into assault. I won the assault and uh, swept them. Uh, so I just consolidated onto that one point objective. And then over here, um, I decided to, well I got assaulted by the Riptide as you can see, I then decided to go for the three Crute, try and uh, make the Riptide take a leadership check, I only killed two, um, and uh, he, did, he, did, he killed uh, a Wraith, and then we um, uh, looked in combat, the single Crute did actually run just four inches there, um, but the Riptide obviously he didn't. So, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, obviously, um, I'm well down on points now. I'm 8 to 0 down. But I'm just about to pick up a bunch of cards. And um, I am scattered around the board. I've got potential to get a few points back. I think we're playing for honour more than anything now. But you never know in this game. So we'll see what happens as I move in to turn 4. 
Okay, so turn four for the Necrons. Uh, drew all the cards, and uh, my luck just uh, not holding up once again. Um, the cards that I drew, um, one was to get double the amount of objectives as the Tau, um, almost impossible. Uh, the next one was to try and get this objective here. Um, I did my best. I rapid fired the five warriors that were there and also uh, shot those guys in. Uh, no damage. I assaulted, no damage, and then he did another good hit and run roll, rolled a two and ran away. Um, over this side here, just down here, we continued the assault. I lost one more Tomb Blade um, held in combat though, so uh, we're just uh, rocking there. Uh, down here, the flayed ones here just moved on to this objective. It wasn't one of my cards, but um, just aiming for the future, just to actually trying to get a point at some point. Um, took the two Scarab Swarms into that guy there. Um, I lost two um, in the assault. Um, I did absolutely no damage and uh, obviously fearless, so I stayed locked in combat. Took the units of wraiths, uh, sorry, uh, flayed ones which were there into the assault. They couldn't hurt it, but hopefully just trying to lock him in close combat. The wraith survived once again. Of course, I did no wounds, um, but stops him from shooting at least. And then over here, I rolled absolutely atrocious. Um, I caused no wounds. Uh, the card that I had was to try and get that objective, objective six, but absolutely no chance. I do have a single wraith just running loose there. He tried to assault the riptide at the back, but um, failed. So once again, absolutely no points for me. Uh, so we're looking at still eight points to zero. Uh, turn five coming up, potentially the last turn. And I think now, it's my key now uh, for me is just to at least get one victory point. <laughs> <laughs> As we move in to turn five for this very nice, powerful <laughs> Tau army. Right, okay, I'm actually back because um, just I had another look at the cards and the board. And in actual fact, I have scored one of my objectives. So, um, yeah, I've control um, this objective here and I control this objective here too. Um, and the tower controlling that one up over there. So I actually have twice uh, the amount that the tower have. So I have a D3 points. So let's roll off and see what I get. A three. So I've got two points. So uh, not too disastrous there. Okay, so we are actually going to go in now to turn five for the tower. Okay, so turn five for the towel. Um, change uh, of tact really for the towel there. Decided just to basically uh, hold everything up of mine in close combat as best as they could. Um, this Riptide came over, shot the flayed ones, but uh, somehow managed to survive. Um, assaulted me. Um, and then you took a wound, but how do you take a wound? I can't remember, I took it now. To overheat and take a wound. Possibly. Yeah, okay, we've got to say overheated, we can't actually remember. But basically, he took a wound, uh, killed no flayed one, so we just locked in combat there. Um, over here, this guy came up, shot uh, my warriors. I lost uh, three in fr from shooting, uh, assaulted in, uh, no damage either way there, so we're just locked in combat. Uh, the combat continues here, again, no damage done. Um, I lost one wound on this guy here on this assault but uh, again just locked in combat uh, lost my two scarab swarms there uh, so objective five free for the tower to take although they didn't actually have that particular card and over here uh, tin spoons no wounds again uh, so tower got one extra point uh, for killing a unit which was the scarabs something like that anyway basically one extra point for the tower um, so I'm in deep trouble now. It's nine points to two. Um, so we'll see what happens. It's going to be a very quick turn five for the Necrons. Okay, so turn five there for the Necrons. Uh, drew my cards out. Again, not great cards. Had to control three objectives. Uh, objective number six, which is the one right down the end of the table. 
Um, not too much to do. I moved those guys up just to get in range to shoot there, which I did. Uh, he made he did that uh, special rule, which made me only be able to snapshot him. Um, and then the single flayed one that was hanging around there, I put him into the assault with that Riptide. And as you can see, the Riptide is dead. Uh, managed to kill him off, consolidated onto the objective number six, which is one point. And I'm also within, um, obviously I've got the line breaker there as well. Um, and then over here we continued this assault, no wounds, as you can see my Wraith holding fast, potentially man of the match I would say. Um, over this side of the table we um, battled it out but no wounds done on either side. Um, over here again we battled it out and no wounds. The main events though was uh, around this way, so yeah I finally lost my Tomb Blades. I did manage to kill one more stealth suit, um, but yeah just hanging out. So, I uh, gained another point, so it's now 9-3 to the Necrons. That Riptide there was just on one wound, so potential. There is still potential for me to at least get uh, maybe a slightly more respectable score if the game goes on. So uh, we're going to roll a dice and see if it continues. Here we go. A one, no, game ends. So there you go. Um, an excellent victory for Ace and his Tau, so well done Ace. It was coming, I had to bring some <laughs> cheese to do it, but it was, it, it was there. It was a really enjoyable game, um, I hope you enjoyed the battle report. Um, obviously Ace has his own channel and uh, he will be doing a uh, battle report of the uh, game from the Tau point of view, to see how, how nasty my Necrons looked from the Tau point of view. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, don't forget to check his channel out, I shall put the link in the description below. Um, thanks for watching as always, and uh, I'm sure we will be facing each other once again in the future. Thanks for watching!